welcome welcome everyone welcome to july's astrology i'm trying to get it out earlier this time because i got a lot going on and as many of you know parts two and three are not going to be here on youtube it's censored content too hot for youtube to handle so um hopefully i will also be releasing those parts on odyssey and bit shoot sooner than later yeah we have got a lot going on and um we might talk more about that at the end of this okay um Right out the gate, I gotta say, you know, to my fellow Americans, happy 4th of July. Yeah. And I don't know whether you're an American or not, please make sure that you checked out my uh, astrology report for the last half of the year for America. I don't know if you checked it out, but if you didn't, you know, please do. Really important stuff in July in that video having to do with the astrology. And of course, I'm going to expand more upon that in a lot more detail on bitch shoot and odyssey but yeah for those of you who just want to stay here on this platform and you want to know what's going on in the united states for july you'll get more astrology over in that video if you are interested so um we're going to talk in this segment mostly about relationships okay love romance relationships although i think the relationships that are most being highlighted this month for the collective have to do with family because we're in a lot of, of cancer energy and so um we will get into that in this episode. Um, but yeah, let me say, speaking of family and 4th of July, I side note, some of you might be interested to know, I am wearing the bracelet of my grandfather who fought in World War II. And this was given to him back in the 1940s by my grandmother, I think when he got back from the war. So uh, some of you might wonder, where's my interest in politics? Well, I've got warriors in my bloodline going all the way back to the Revolutionary War. On my dad's side of the family, one of the first people to come to America was an indentured servant. Okay, so um, we we are not about white supremacy. We're about freedom supremacy. Okay, yes, we're the people that the globalists are trying to get rid of with hate whitey campaigns. <laughs> and so, um, it, you know, maybe it's hard for me not to get into politics because of that. Is I've got revolutionaries in my blood, and uh, or you can blame it on the astrology. Uh, if you look at my natal chart, I have most uh, most of my astrological activity is in the 10th house having to do with governments, mega corporations, things like that. So it's, it's hard for me to resist, but we will talk about relationships in this segment. All right. Now, as many of you know, we are coming into heavier and heavier retrogrades. Um, coming into this month, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto in retrograde, and then July 19th, we're going into Chiron retrograde and in Aries and then Jupiter uh, retrograde in Aries as well on July 28th. So this is building up, by the way, well into October. Things are going to get more sluggish feeling as we get deeper into the year. And then with the lunar energies of this month, having a full moon in Capricorn on the 13th, a new moon in Leo on the 28th, we are looking at uh, themes of Cancer Capricorn continuing on from yeah, June into July of this private life versus public life, nurturing versus protecting. And then it's going to kind of switch halfway through into these uh, new themes in, in Leo Aquarius in August, you know, where it's ego versus altruism and like, yeah, self versus other. Okay. So I see a lot of shifting back and forth from you know, the personal signs to the transpersonal signs of, okay, how is what's going on with the collective impacting me at an individual level? And how do I at an individual level impact the collective? Overall, I think this is a month where there's going to be sensitivities. There's going to be security issues continuing on because of the cancer energies and Capricorn as well these matters of comfort versus security. Um, also women and families, those are gonna to continue to be major themes. Also women and families and children versus the authorities. That I think is gonna be the first half of the month focus until we get into about July and then the sun moves from Cancer into Leo, at which point the second half of the month there's going to be a spotlight on matters having to do with children, creations, and yeah, in a relationship reading, I got to say, you know, fun, dating, romance, going out, you know, um, having a good time. Now, don't get too excited, right? <laughs> Everything in balance. Uh, 
we are coming, like I said, into increasingly retrograde energies um, well into October where it will be the heaviest. And so if you're trying to make some major moves with your life, now is probably going to be the time that you need to do it sooner than later because it's going to become more difficult the longer you wait. And also sooner in the month, if you're doing it this month, do it sooner in the month because as we get deeper into July and the energy... Um, also becomes a lot more disruptive and explosive by July 31st, August 1st, which that's when we have a triple conjunction, which a lot of astrologers have been talking about from the beginning of the year. It's a really big deal. So um, watch out for that. I will talk about this more towards the end of this segment. Now, a reminder before we get into important dates, um, as I mentioned before, we are still in Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, and that's going to be for another four months into October. Okay. So... These retrogrades that are continuing on as we get into this month and even leaving this month um, are bringing about a layer of energy in addition to all the other energies, making it quite possible that people are getting angry and frustrated regarding difficulties having to do with forward, getting forward movement and transformation in their lives. And it might have to do with heavy endings, heavy handed authorities, in relationships, this might have to do with issues of sex, intimacy, power, trust. And so the timelines that this retrograde may have you reflecting on or might be relevant to look back on would be November of 2008, or basically the last 14 years when Pluto first went into Capricorn. Oh my, right, we had a housing crisis back then if you recall. And then shortly thereafter, Wall Street got bailed out on the taxpayer's dime. Gee, what's happened since then? <laughs> okay, so again, I try not to get into politics here, but you know, that affected people at home base, right? Did it not? When, people, when you lose your home, and a lot of people did back then, and interestingly, we're coming into a month where home and family is really highlighted, and gee, I'm gonna talk about it in part two and three, the housing crisis okay it's it's spilling over it's affecting these family relationships um, vulnerabilities within families having to do with shared resources dependency issues okay another relevant date to reflect upon would be January 10th of 2020 that was right before the pandemic lockdowns hit we had that Saturn Pluto conjunction very pivotal time in history astrological history and then uh, also another timeline would be April 29th of this year because that's when Pluto retrograded while in Capricorn. So all these timelines you may reflect on this month and in some way you're seeing how events from those time frames are overshadowing or coloring how you are experiencing this month. All right, we're going to get into uh, the dates. We're going to go through the dates and I'm going to sip on my my Texas tea I'm drinking from locally HTO love it love it I'm having today I'm having almond green almond green I had Texas chai the last time man so many great flavors try Georgia peach if you can if y'all if somebody's out here watching find you an HTO and go get you some really good you get to buy local too it's always a good thing all right so getting into the astrology starting out the second of this month, we have Mercury in Gemini squaring Neptune in Pisces and trine Saturn in Aquarius. So this is opening up the month with some conflict between information and illusion. And perhaps, yes, very likely coming from the media. And the good thing about this is that it is causing people to start positively limiting and restricting what they think and what they believe coming in from media resources or sources and this might have to do with your individual rights and relationally it might bring about situations where people are together sorting through facts versus fiction in conversations uh, yes it might just be about you know the relationships you're having with other people what's the truth about this person versus you know what's reality is it like what you wanted to believe versus what actually is 
um, and, and maybe starting to kind of narrow down what it is that you accept as truth versus lies. And this is especially after we've had that full moon in Sagittarius last month of June, um, where people are letting go of beliefs and they're having to open up to new perspectives, higher perspectives based on facts. Now on the 5th, Mars is going into Taurus until August 20th. And so this energy is going to support people standing strong and holding firm in, in whatever it is that they are trying to do, okay? Having endurance in the face of adversity, stabilizing their lives in the face of instability. The challenge with this energy would be having this unyielding, predictable way of going about doing things, um, the having the avoidance of risk, having those strong desires at the same time. So I think the advice uh, during this time is to try to take some calculated risks, weigh out your risk, you know, try to discern when change and risk is actually good for you and be open to creative solutions, especially when the methodical approaches are not producing the results, despite your patience and your perseverance. I'm already feeling in June like I'm noticing it keeps getting communicated to me through different people, different interactions, people like, but I want a guarantee, you know, and I, I, want, a, I want an agreement here. I want the, basically they want certainty, okay? Um, but the thing is, we're living in very uncertain times, are we not? And so my advice is have contingency plans in the event of failure, okay? Because there's no guarantees, you know? And, and I recently had this conversation with my daughter. She's just like, well, I don't want to do this unless I have a guarantee over the next 12 months. But guess what? I can't even guarantee the next month. <laughs> you know, welcome to the matrix, okay? Uh, yeah, welcome to Uranus and Taurus, you know? And, and here we are Mars on, on the 5th, Mars and Taurus until August 20th, all right? People want to lock it down um, with what they're doing, uh, but... The reality is there are things outside of our control externally and so you you really are going to have to weigh weigh the risks and take calculated risks because that's where we're at in this matrix right now sorry to say there are no guarantees trust me if there had been guarantees uh myself and the rest of you would be in much better situations by now a am i wrong i don't think so all right, on the same day, Mercury is going into Cancer until July 19th, and communications and thoughts are going to be more influenced by emotions and instincts during this time. It's not very logical, okay? The challenge here is in absorbing a lot of contextual data, picking up empathically uh, on people's moods, tones, the spiritual temperature of the atmosphere, uh, people are probably going to be more integrating that kind of data in the, the unspoken emotional realm or spiritual realm. Um, unfortunately, some people don't process that very well now, do they? Um, so that could be a challenge because if people start reading into things, uh, micro expressions or whatnot, and they start feeling that something's off or this person's not receiving or they're not going to receive what I have to say, well, um, and they don't know, they, they, some people shut down. Like I said, they don't know how to deal with that. Um, you could see that there are personal issues and interactions that are being, that are overshadowing these intellectual exchanges because of sensitivities. I mean, just to put it plainly, because of sensitivities where people just don't, don't really, they don't take a direct approach because they don't want to upset people. Um, and so as a result, new original thinking becomes less forthcoming than when in Gemini last month, right? In July, I mean in June. So a good use of this energy, I will say on the positive, is uh, try to, in your conversations, seek more intimacy and warmth. And that would be a positive use of the energy during that time. Now on the eighth, Sun and Cancer will be squaring with Chiron in Aries. This will yet again bring about emotional security issues. It's just another layer here of that. Um, but in this situation, more specifically squaring Chiron and Aries, the insecurities, the sensitivities have to do with self-worth issues. And in some way, families, the feminine energies, mothering um, are possibly coming up for consideration. 
in some way, perhaps families, feminine energies are being challenged by some wounded sense of self. You know, the positive is that, yeah, it's a difficult, but it's where you're seeing the difficulties are revealing what, what weaknesses need to be strengthened, what woundedness needs to be healed. That's the positive of this. Now on the 10th, just as a reminder, the United States is hitting its second Pluto return. It's a second hit. Um, and so, you know, definitely if you're an American, this is very important. This is impacting us collectively as Americans. Um, although some argue that what happens in America happens in the rest of the world, it affects the rest of the world. And so, yeah, like I said before, if you haven't seen my U.S. astrology report for the second half of this year on America's astrology, probably check that out because I will go into a lot more detail in that video. And also I'll do the same in parts two and three of this report on BitChute and Odyssey. Um, it's all interconnected. Like, I'm going to try not to bring it up here, but I'm saying if you want to know more, go there because we can act like we're disconnected from the bigger uh, world, the greater world, the economy, but no. Um, you might be finding around the 10th that in some way what's going on with the economy is in fact affecting you. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not going to be able to connect these dots. They're going to know that something's off in the force. What is it? Why is my stuff not lining up? Well, that's why it's a domino effect. It's spilling over. It does affect you. Sorry, just side rant. I don't like, there are a lot of new AG people will be so quick to say, um, all is one or we're all one, but then they won't get into politics and it's like, I thought everything was connected and then, but you're leaving that out. No, I, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> all right, moving on to, um, the 13th, we have a full moon in Capricorn, and this is the a culmination of the new moon in Cancer two weeks prior on June 29th. So yet again, we're getting this continuation from June of issues regarding private versus public life, home and family versus career and reputation, nurturing versus protecting, attachments versus achievements, unconditional versus conditional love, dependency versus responsibility, roots versus direction and these energies are asking us to find balance that's really being illuminated during these times the challenge here is going to be if you have unresolved conflict and imbalances between these two contrasting energies that's going to get revealed and yeah it could be emotional around the 13th with this being a full moon which is about letting go and releasing things so let it out if it does get emotional and realize that this isn't going to be the most rational time for many people if other people are getting emotional well you kind of know what it is now don't you let them process it let them have their time and space to process and also just be cognizant of any uh, epiphanies realizations that that get brought up during this time with Mercury and Uranus aspecting this full moon. The signs that'll probably be most impacted by this will be the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Now on the 17th, we have Venus and Cancer until August 11th. This is an opportunity for relationships to take on a more romantic or intimate feel. And also just having a greater appreciation for family life, the domestic life and nurturing home and family, embracing having a sense of belonging for yourself and for others. Then on the 19th, with Mercury and Leo until August 4th, I think we're going to see a shift towards more confidence, which is going to be good, right? Because up to this point, with all this Cancerian energy, I've been talking about sensitivities and insecurities, but now as we get more into Leo season, confidence returns to talking, to thinking, uh, particularly, you know, in Mercury here, there could be some grandstanding going on, people getting on their soapbox, nothing wrong with it, there's a time and a place, right? We all have our moments. Um, you can also see that people are being highly persuasive with their speech during this time, very um, convincing of their views, their opinions, but perhaps the listening skills are a bit lacking during this time. And perhaps people are maybe a little too self-focused 
at this time. I don't want to say opinionated. It's just Mercury and Leo is this vibe of I'm here. I have something to say, you know, uh, and maybe, you know, other people have things to say. <laughs> okay. So, um, and I, I don't think it's being done out of a place of, of necessarily arrogance. It's just that people get excited about their own ideas and are going to be a lot more decisive. I'm, I'm kind of loving the shift. We just got to keep it in balance, right? Um, it will be an opportunity for people to defend their views and to develop more creativity and have more recreation in life, which I think is lovely. Oh my gosh. I mean, hey, I might be filming this next month. I might be filming the August astrology at about this time in July. And I think I might have a much better view for y'all. Oh, oh, shh. I'm not going to tell you just yet what that's going to be, but it's going to be better. Okay. So, um, get out there. Yes. Go do something fun. All right. Especially as we get into Leo season. All right. The only challenge with this energy is that, uh, people are going to be less concerned with details, less aware maybe, um, and not hearing other people out. Like I said, so I think the advice is yes, let your voice be heard but don't be too prideful to hear others out and use that persuasion, that gift of persuasion to um, open people's eyes to the truth, to help awaken people. We got to wake people up. Team, wake them up. Yeah. Enough of this woke stuff. It's team, wake them up. Let's do it in July. I will say though, the last week of this month could be the most challenging for all of us collectively um, in terms of, you know, communication. And that is because we have on the 26th through the 31st a lot of mercury and leo aspects on the 26th it's squaring mars and taurus which could be kind of aggressive uh 27th trining uh chiron and aries which is potentially healing that's nice but then on the 28th squaring uranus and taurus which could be disruptive and destabilizing 29th squaring north node and taurus possibly derailing 31st opposing saturn in aquarius boundary breaking. Overall, what does this mean? These squares and oppositions indicate communication problems. Having to do with self-sufficiency, all things Taurus, uh, and what's being communicated has to do with ego, Leo, right? Um, Self-concern. What about me? Asserting and desiring change of direction that is being met with external limitations posed by authorities or altruistic ideals prepare yourself to be challenged in communications towards the last week of this month. Another thing going on towards the end of this month that is just amplifying this difficulty with communications is that we have Chiron retrograde in Aries on the 19th, the same day that Mercury goes into Leo, okay? And Chiron in retrograde Aries will stay uh, there until August 1st, along with the triple conjunction I'm about to talk about. It's a shit show, people. Just buckle up. No worries, we're gonna get through it, okay? And we'll get through it right right the first week of August. It's gonna start softening up, settling down. So just, you know, don't don't get too nervous. I'm trying to uh, forewarn you, okay? So that you're prepared. And so you don't get ruffled by this, by the people who can't connect the dots, don't know what's going on, don't know that this too shall pass, okay? It's a passing energy. But going back to Chiron retrograde and Aries, on the 19th with Mercury and Leo. A lot of people are gonna be reflecting on personal healing during this time, having to do with issues of self-reliance and personal autonomy. Thinking back, how did I mishandle that in the past? How can I heal this now? It has to do with some issue of self-determination, the right to self-determination and the right to direct your own course in life. There are some kind of self-worth issues at play here, and maybe it's you coming to a knowing that you are enough. You are qualified to direct your own course in life. And if you're wrong, you have a right to make mistakes and learn from them just like everybody else, despite the media and cultural messaging saying that you need authorities for that because they know better than you. Remember. Aries is the child of the Zodiac and surrounded by all this Cancer Capricorn energy, Cancer being the mother of the Zodiac, Capricorn being the father. <laughs> These are like the parents of the Zodiac. Okay. So, you know, there's, there's two ways to look at this. Um, in my opinion, 
the higher expression of this energy is that the parents of the Zodiac, Cancer Capricorn, are calling you, Chiron and Aries, to grow up in your own inner authority while others are telling you to play small. And I'm going to talk more about this, by the way, in parts two and three, because we've definitely get, been getting some kind of uh, parentifying people in authority who are actually supposed to be servants. Um... I don't want to get all off into that, okay, here, because some of y'all are not ready to hear it, and I'm going to leave it for those of you who are over on BitChute and Odyssey, but just a reminder, Chiron remains in Aries until December 15th, so this issue of self-worth issues and the right to determine your own course in life and the, the right to be able to make mistakes and learn from them this will not go away anytime soon. This is going on until December 15th. It will come out of retrograde on August 1st with the cripple, with the triple conjunction. <laughs> wow. I don't even know why it was a Freudian slip. I said cripple, cripple conjunction. Holy crap. Just, <laughs> we got to think about that. <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to sell fear porn here. Okay. Let's, let's keep it moving. Um, I'm going to talk about that triple cripple conjunction in just a moment. Um, let's talk first though about on the 22nd when the sun moves into Leo and it will be there until August 22nd so this is going to be time to shine have fun enjoy yourself my god go out do something I think I'm going to be doing I'm going to be getting out in the summertime here in Texas I'm going to be doing a lot of local events in the Austin area and um, probably go to some nature trails go uh, get in some of that cool spring water running through the riverbeds on those nature trails like definitely absolutely get out there enjoy yourself do what you can breathe in that fresh air right and with the sun and leo i think people are going to be not only more open to getting out having fun but also i think people are going to become more generous at least that's more likely okay people are more also motivated during this time to gain do things to gain affection and respect from others so this is really an opportunity for us collectively to realize our own personal power to tap into that spark within that's there that was maybe dimmed in previous years find and use your voice again get recognition for that and create something create something be a creator the only challenge with this energy is you got to be aware of attention seeking behavior or unhealthy levels of self-concern i mean yeah there's a time and a place where we do need to pull back and focus on ourselves and heal ourselves and all of this, okay? But at what point does it get into a dark zone and you need to come out of that isolation and you need to connect with others? You know, um, at what point do you need to, you know, uh, finish healing or say that's enough for now, I need to get out and maybe find a different way of healing through plugging back into people because maybe that actually helps my healing more than being a recluse, you know? <laughs> Just a thought, just a thought. On the 23rd, Mercury in Leo will trine Jupiter in Aries. So this, you know, could be some incredibly vociferous energy, right? Um, people getting pretty loud about how they want personal ex expansion in their lives. They want blessing. Where's my blessing? Here's what I want. And, you know, on the positive, whatever there is being communicated may, in fact, open up doors and you know, bless them on a personal level. The challenge is you just got to watch out for this. It's all about me kind of attitude coming across in people because again, yes, speak up for yourself, stand up for yourself. But at what point is it too much of a good thing? Like at what time, at what point is it like going overboard or it's inappropriate or whatever, you know? So on the 25th, Venus and Cancer squaring Jupiter and Aries, there's watch out. There could be some conflict with uh, nurturing, nourishing family, home, uh, things having to do with the feminine energies as well versus how am I going to get personal expansion because in some way perhaps home and family is conflicting with self-interest okay and again not making a judgment call on you know it's, it's the, each person has their own unique set of circumstances of which I know nothing about right you, you you're going to have to weigh it out and maybe yes both are important at this time but but something is maybe at odds you doing what's in your best interest versus your family. Now, 
as I mentioned before, communication's rough 26th through 31st because of all these aspects that Mercury and Leo is making. Then, you know, on the 28th, we've got this new moon in Leo. And over the next two weeks, as we're getting into August 11th with the full moon in Aquarius, there will be some new beginning from the 28th of July to August 11th. Okay, some new beginning having to do with fun dating, romance, children, creative endeavors, and perhaps during this time, you're setting goals, or it would be a good idea, right? A lot of people set their intentions on new moons, okay? And so on this new moon, um, maybe this new intention that you're setting or these goals that you're setting for the next two weeks will have to do with starting something new with your dating life, your romantic life, maybe involving your children or creative endeavors. In some way, I think this is going to bring about a boost in confidence and maybe also... Uh, helping you work on some inner child issues, all right? Um, finding more innocence in your life, more fun, more joy, figuring out how to integrate more of that into your life. And whatever it is, you're likely going to be very expressive about it, especially with Mercury also in Leo during this time. The advice is use, use this new moon as a time to consider how you can enhance these areas of your life that I mentioned. And Aspects with Jupiter, Mars, Uranus will give additional support for you if you are wanting to improve your life with a new innovative approach. It could be really hot on, by the way, during this time frame, this July 28th through August 1st, August 11th, to um, do something, you know, with your children, your family, do something with your dating life, really good time. And also on that same day, the 28th, Jupiter retrograde in Aries, well, it's going to be retrograde until November 23rd. And so we're looking at the next four months of Jupiter retrograde. And this has to do with people wanting to get expansion in some way with themselves. Their ideals, though, are in some way being contracted, okay? There's some inability to get the expansion in the way that you want with this retrograde. It's causing you to reflect on getting a new perspective, getting a new game plan. It might cause you to let go of any excess in your life that's weighing you down, holding you back. Some of you are going to be downsizing, some of you right-sizing. Um, I know a lot of people don't, like, they're trying again, trying to get forward movement, and I said this from the very beginning of this video. If you want to get forward movement, now is the time. Because as we get into July and deeper into July, not only are we getting heavier into heavier retrogrades well into October, it just gets thicker and thicker like sludge. <laughs> uh, but also, you know, the end of July, we're getting into disruptive energy with this triple conjunction. Hence, maybe why my Freudian slip was cripple conjunction. <laughs> do something if you want to do it before the end of July, okay? Um, because I think that the contraction coming in with Jupiter retrograde in Aries will be a contraction on personal expansion in your life. You're going to definitely start feeling it more and more as we get deeper into August. I should say deeper into July. Um, and you may find that with that increasing restriction, you have to increase light, uh, letting go of things, lightening your load. And some of you, it may reach a point of I can't downsize any more than this, um, and you're forced to slow down. You're forced to allow things to happen organically at a better time. The challenge with this energy is that if you're wanting fast movement and progress, that's going to be unlikely while Jupiter is retrograde. And also enthusiasm can be lacking as well. Again, especially getting into October when the retrogrades are the heaviest. So. Moving on to the 31st, triple conjunction with North Node, Mars, Uranus, and Taurus. Chiron will also go direct on that day. Remember, I said previously that it went retrograde July 11th through August 1st. So reflection time is now over and it comes out with a bang with this triple conjunction. It's time to now act. It's time to heal around August 1st. There could be, with this triple conjunction, random pivotal events interactions that come up that are causing you to let go of whatever is stopping you from going and growing in your rightful direction. With this alignment in Taurus, the growth lessons are likely about self-sufficiency. I'm going to say this push might be the universe saying, now's your time. If you're going to make a move, make it now because that window is closing. 
as we get it might be your last effort right as we get heavier into retrogrades that that that's your last move you know what i'm saying with this alignment in taurus the growth lessons are about self-sufficiency and these lessons are here to refine our understanding of comfort security and stability through the lens of sovereignty and personal autonomy and the right to self-determination in life the right to self-direct your own life and from this a realization might be coming out in a lot of people that personal freedom involves risk and many have given it up in favor of comfort and security the challenge here for us collectively is to figure out how do we find more comfort and security without giving up our freedom how do we do that and it takes me back to a classic quote from one of our founding fathers benjamin franklin who said those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety some quotes stated as you will get neither liberty nor safety I think people are starting to figure that out. Like, wait a minute, I gave up all this stuff for comfort and security, and now I have lost my freedom, and I didn't get comfort and security. I actually got more insecurity and more discomfort while losing my freedom. Again, reminding you about the United States' second hit of Pluto return on the 10th of this month. If you're an American, this is very important because this is hitting the United States sixth house. Sixth house has to do with workers. It has to do with um, health issues. And I think what we're gonna see is a disruption to daily life as we've known it and having to say goodbye to um, the way it, it has been, okay? This could bring about radical change affecting the mundane. That's what sixth house is, the mundane everyday life, okay? And it could bring about something changing in plain sight, what's going on with your work, your daily routines, health habits, all of that. And so this conjunction begins on the 31st, but it tightens into August 1st. So we could see people standing up more for themselves, especially with all the Leo energy during this time. People beginning to realize hidden enemies, self-sabotage starting to question, wait a minute, how did I give my power away? How did I consent to this loss of liberty? Why did I consent to this loss of liberty? Through manufactured consent, through passivity, compliance, through things that ended up disempowering you at the end of the day and now has people reflecting on their inability to get forward movement in their lives as they wish, not others them right Aries Leo it's very fiery and a lot of people starting to feel impotent powerless while others feeling very impulsive very inflamed about this so there could be a lot of mental conflict during this time and confusion causing some people to become very intellectually withdrawn with a re-examining reconsidering trying to plan their way out of this situation that we currently find ourselves in post convid okay trying to bring order after disorder there will be a lot of intuition for people to tap into during this time but logically things are probably not going to add up and the communications might be off during this time and Part of the reason why things might not be adding up during this time, causing communications to be off, is because a lot of people have a lot of catching up to do, okay? They're behind on the learning curve. There's, there's a lot of people still learning the truth. They're still grappling with the truth. So if you wanna know specifically how this is gonna impact you and your natal chart, well, check out which houses are being impacted um, to know exactly what area of life this is gonna target for you, right? So for me, it's hitting my 12th house. So I'm definitely going to be, you know, reflecting on these issues of powerlessness um, and healing and all of that. So, um, and stepping into my own power, okay? Um, but like I said, if you wanna know more, uh, check this out on here on YouTube. I have America's Astrology for the second half of this year. I'll put the link to the video at the end if you wanna click on through that and watch it. And 
obviously for specific to July and you know with the economy and the politics that's on bit shoot and Odyssey. I have to keep saying it because you got to keep reminding people. You do. You do. Um, they've done studies. They say you got to say it seven times before people actually go over there. <laughs> You can't just say it one time because some people are not going to hear it the first time, right? They're going to, well, I'll get over there and they never do. So you got to keep saying it. I'm sorry for those of you who are like, okay, enough about this. Sorry, content creator problems. We have to beat the drum or people won't go over, believe it or not. All right. Now, also on this day of the 20, no, 31st on that triple conjunction, the sun and Leo will be trying Jupiter retrograde in Aries, okay? As it's coming, it's coming out of retrograde on the 1st, but... Um, on the 31st, there will be that trine and it is a positive aspect, right? Look, look for the silver lining in the dark cloud. Uh, this is highlighting how to get personal expansion, possibly by looking back on what did not work in the past. I don't know, maybe complying and consenting didn't work out. Maybe passivity that didn't work out. Okay. Or what's no longer working like you know while well, you locked us down for the first time but we're not doing that anymore right and i'm hearing rumors that in some areas there will be a second attempt in the fall which i talk about on other you know i'm not talking about it here but you know people are looking back like uh that that didn't really work out for us i'm not going to do that again so now a new approach is being shown some people knew when that first happened that was not going to work other people they had to experience it. You could not have told them. They have to see with their own eyes. That doesn't work. And now you got a lot of reports coming out saying, oh, that, these lockdowns actually did more harm than good. So fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> All right. What, whatever difficulty comes up during this time uh, from the conjunction, remember this too shall pass, okay? Because the first week of August, there are energies that are gonna soften things out for you. Just hang on let the dust settle whatever happens okay we I'm, and i want to just because you know that's kind of i don't want to leave you off with this big bang right i want to leave you off with some encouragement and hope so i'm going to just say very briefly that first week of august venus is going to be in cancer squaring chiron and aries all right so yes there is some kind of personal challenge that you're facing that we collectively are facing having to do with nurturing nourishing home family feminine energies but by august 2nd Venus and Cancer will sextile the North Node, Uranus, Mars, all in Taurus. And this is going to soften out those challenges, giving support in making positive, pivotal changes. And seeing opportunities and possibilities open up where you can overcome any lack of clarity there may have been around these issues. Just be aware that Venus and Cancer is also going to be opposing Pluto retrograde in Capricorn August 9th. Okay. So it may be that by August 9th, you realize these positive changes and possibilities are not supported by those in authority. And you might get some kind of pushback. Conversely, the pushback from authorities are causing people to make changes anyway. So it's a bit of a, it might be a little bit of a tug of war, but the first week of August, people are trying to overcome the challenges within themselves and with their families and having a sense of belonging having to do with getting progress in their lives, getting the expansion and go in the direction that they personally individually desire. Even though there is unchanged behavior from authorities during this time who are maybe not supporting it, the collective is working to bring about these changes regardless. Y'all stay encouraged, go out there, seize the moment, seize the day, have fun out in the sun, Enjoy it. I know it's like, a, you know, 95 degrees right now. It's going to be up to 100, okay, uh, later on this afternoon in Texas. But, you know, go go out there and do something. Uh, you know, go to a nice little spring riverbed um, that I like I'm going to go to, you know. Go to a lake. Go to a beach. Do something during cancer season. Leo, um, enjoy your family. Nurture yourself. Take care of yourself. Nourish yourself. And find your voice and use it. Y'all stay free. Be blessed.